Hi guys, it's Donna from Old Ways and uh, the professor. Hello. And we're here because we're doing a video today that's going to be a collaboration with Big Bear Homestead and Breakaway Homestead. And the collaboration is on um, what was the catalyst that started us homesteading. So we're going to answer uh, six questions and go on from there. So, right away, we'll go to question number one. What was the reason you started to homestead? Illness. Illness. Um, the professor had a, a TBI, a traumatic brain injury, while he was in the service. And um, <clears throat> one day, went to work, went hunting that night, and woke up the next day and collapsed because his body had been... Had broken down and um, he'd been misdiagnosed for over 20 years. So, even though we canned and we always had a garden, and just six months prior to that, we we started um, with chickens. Yeah. Somebody didn't want them, but Julie well, and I went out. I didn't want them right then. Exactly, but. Somebody came home with 24 chicks, and so... It's like, I don't, I'm not sure how zero and two dozen balance out in your mind, but okay. We had chickens. It worked. It worked. Okay. So that was the catalyst for um, us starting. He... he uh, your body broke down, yeah. basically. Yeah. And then they... Um, well, to expand on that... He went to the doctors. They found out what was wrong. They told us that um, he was done working. We were both in our 40s. That he wasn't going to be able to work anymore. Because his body had broken down that much. And we lost 60% of our income. So we sat down and talked and said, Okay. We had enough to make our house payments. We had enough to pay all our bills. Because we always believed in living within your means. And when we but bought what, when we bought the house, we worst cased it, you know. Yeah. What's you know, if if I lose my job, if all that goes away, what can we manage? And so now the next step was we can exist, but how do we live? So when you started Question number two. When you started, how much research did you do or did you just jump in? Oh, absolutely none. <laughs> absolutely no research whatsoever. It was more like a woohoo! Head first, dive. Is there a pool down there? Yay! <laughs> hey, we jumped. Is there water? Yep, there's water. Okay. Yeah, we'll make it work. Quick, so, turn on the hose. Absolutely no research. And for me, that works. For other people, it doesn't. Um, but it works. Yeah, she had brought the chicks home. And said, well, we don't know anything about chicks. We, you know, it's well, we got time. They're little. They're going to be in the, you know, brooder till they get bigger. So we'll figure it out. Exactly. And we did. We made it work. Um, so the question number three. Uh huh. What did you start with? Well, since we already had garden and were canning and um, had chicks. The next thing I think we started with was goats. Dairy when, goats. When we made our decision, okay, this is how we're going to live, we went to dairy goats. So what do, what do we need to fill in next? Dairy goats, we've got two full-size Lamaches, one in milk and one ready to be bred and start the process so we could stagger the milking season. Yeah. And we had a half a gallon of milk a day. A day from one. Yeah, so, so we had more than enough milk, and we actually found out that you can freeze that for up to five months. So we figured, okay, we would um, milk her every day. We weren't making cheese yet because, you know, even though I will jump in feet first and, and then look to see if there's water, I even have my limits. But we, could, we had plenty of milk. That worked real well for us. So we started with the goats. We already had the chickens. Um, next, we added rabbits. rabbits. We kind of wanted to work into rabbits, and... but they hadn't quite. It hadn't quite worked out. 
Yeah. It worked out at that point. Yeah, so we got rabbits. So we had chickens for eggs. And then I got a phone call about a year later. Hey, look, I can get three piglets. Do you want one? And I said, of course. And uh, then it was uh, time to pick it up. And oh, I, by the way, <laughs> guess what we're doing today? I, I went to pick it up and I said, uh, hey, hey, baby, um, I need some help. I'm bringing home a piglet. Will they fit in a dog house for now? But anyway, I digress. Go on. Well, we had the rabbits for meat. We had the chickens for eggs and meat. And we had the goats for milk. We were doing that, plus the gardening was going fairly well. The pig was just an additional source of meat. So it was. Question number four. What was the hardest part when you started? The hardest part was that he was sick or his body had broken down and he had no stamina. 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 And, and, and Phenomena. Phenomena. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, um, he was unable to do a lot. So I would wake up at 5.30 in the morning. Now, our property had fencing around the perimeter, but I would wake up at 5.30 in the morning and I would put up fencing so that um, we could section off the property. And we didn't have much property at all. We only had a little more than a half acre. And honestly, that's how I hurt my shoulder because I would take a sledgehammer and put the, the handle on my shoulder and then hold the T-post with this hand and then bring the head of the sledgehammer down to get the um, to drive the post to drive in. the post in, and then you know pulling the fence by myself because you all know we have children Julie and um, bearded Stephen brother. bearded brother, but they were grown and living out of state um, because. They were older and they were grown and working and living out of state and married and doing their own lives having okay. their lives yeah we were in our 40s when all this happened so um you know the last thing we expected we wanted the homestead but we were always trying to well we got to have this before we do it and we have to have that but anyway i digress the hardest part was that um building infrastructure pretty much fell on me by myself you did what you could but well because you know I, we worked for 15 minutes and rest for two hours so i would get up at 5 30 um go outside work until about 7 30 8 o'clock about the time you were going to wake up mm -hmm. and um go in and take care of you get whatever you needed doctor's appointments and then after dinner come home and do the same thing mm -hmm. so okay. I, that was the hardest part okay question number five what do you know now that you wish you knew then uh start when we were younger yeah. um yeah yeah that's it's, it's what we know now that we didn't know wish we'd known then is it's not as hard as we thought no it's not and as it, hard as we thought and it, it's um, it's actually very much more peaceful. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it it brings peace to your soul and satisfaction. It does. Um, after going through all of the process for a while, I got to where I was a little better off, so I could get more involved with caring for the animals and things. And I really enjoyed it. I mean, As a matter of fact, the doctors, when they said that you weren't going to be able to work anymore, and that was another thing, the doctors told us when he was in his 40s, and we were both in our 40s, that he wasn't going to be able to work anymore. So, um, but they didn't want him just sitting there doing nothing and, and feeling sorry for himself and such. So the rewards that came from the animals and... Working, yeah, it was it was very beneficial for my physical health to have the activity and my mental health to have something where I could feel I was contributing. Right. So it's not that it's not it's it can be hard 
as far as work to do depending on when things go sideways but it's not complicated it's not difficult it's just right you know you can do it you we the other thing is we didn't know a lot but we knew a lot of people who had skills in different areas so use your resources I, I, I think you're going into okay well question number six mm -hmm. what advice would you give someone thinking of getting into homesteading uh, don't stand in your own way don't be your own stumbling block just do it um there are plenty of books out there there are plenty of uh websites and plenty of youtube channels and plenty of information that what there's a lot more out there now than there was when we started and the good thing is most folks like us who have a youtube channel we talk about homesteading sorts of things if you have a question if we oh yeah just ask, ask a question people are going to answer your question and help you out um we have some very good friends that we met and worked through asking questions about things on YouTube. Yeah, like Big Bear Homestead yeah, and Bear, Breakaway, Homestead. Breakaway Homestead. So there's a lot of resources out there. Use the resources. Don't be scared. Just do it. Exactly. The sooner you start, the sooner you'll start reaping the benefits. And, and again, don't be your own stumbling block. Just, just have confidence and look homesteading is a huge term okay it you don't have to have 40 acres and a cow and a mule and you don't have to have that you can have a half acre like we did and do really good land management where you have a section where you have your uh rabbit hutches where you have a section where your chickens have room to free range, and we would move them around so that they would get fresh grass. Mm -hmm. um, we had a section where we had two little goats that we would, well, they weren't little. They were full-size Lamanches. But we would move them around and walk them around. And since everything had fencing up, we could let them walk around and nibble where they wanted. And the only thing that was confined was a pig. Yeah. But even he had room... To walk and and root. But, well, but we didn't take the pig for strolls to other areas. We kept the pig in the pig space just because. We did. Yeah. Now you're going to say you garden too, and we did. But I did a lot of container gardening as well because we had to replace steps on our porch. So I took the old steps and put a back on them, and then I had tiers, and I could put buckets, and I could put tomatoes. And the Walmart, the 50 cent Walmart bags, I could take those and I grew, I grew peppers in those and I grew, um, cauliflower and broccoli and, and, you know, so wherever you have a little space or you can put a tiered level, um, something or other, you can always put, think vertical. Yeah. You don't have to think ground level, think, <coughs> pardon me, think vertical. The only, the two things. Homesteading is a huge continuum. You don't have to embrace it all at once. You can no. start with what you're interested in, what you like, and grow from there, or stick with that. That's the and, other... I'm sorry. Well, my other point was simply... Start slow. Start slow. No, I was going to say, when you build your fences, build them strong. Yeah. I don't, you know, everything else, work around it, whatever, but <laughs> you need good fences. And, and that's another piece of advice. Start slow. You don't... Circumstances forced us to do everything within about six months. You don't have to do that. If your circumstances allow you not to do that, take your time. Master your skill. If you want chickens, get your chickens. Go through a season with chickens and figure out if this is going to work for you. If it is, add something else. If gardening, if food is your necessity, then, then start your garden and do a a spring, summer, and a fall, uh, winter garden, you know, depending on where you live. Where we live, I can do a, a cold crop, mm -hmm. um, garden, so I can have peas and broccoli and cauliflower and, and Brussels sprouts and things like that. So take what you have, work within the resources you have, 
pick what you're interested in and just do it and Go master it. it and then when you get through that season add something else you don't have to see too many people who start in homesteading burn themselves out because they think they have to do it all now you don't have to if all you want to do is raise a few rabbits raise a few raise rabbits. a few rabbits you could be the rabbit master have every bit of information ever needed and become the expert on rabbits if that's what fits go with what you want to do so that that's our advice again please go over to big bear homestead and breakaway homestead i will link them in the description below and they are the next two on this collaboration when they do their videos they will tag two more people in and we will keep this going but as always have a safe and blessed day and share your knowledge bye y'all